I've been going to jail all my life. It started off at the at the state prisons. Okay. And we could go there like every weekend. Okay. So, but then other than that, just um, growing up as a kid without a father in the house, you know, I didn't tell when they talked about uh, your father at school, I didn't talk about mine. And, you know, I just kind of kept that to myself. Yeah, we on Boss Talk 101. Yeah, we going to talk. We want to take it back to when you were growing up, young Larry Hoover. Junior. Junior. Tell us, tell us what it was like um, growing up growing up without a father, or should I say... Without a father in the home. In the home. And how much did he still play a role in your family, although he was locked up? Well, I'm going to say he played a... He still played a big role in my life because um, between my mother and my grandmother... I was always able to go see my father. See, it's a lot of kids that end up in situations like I was in, where if the relationship with the mother is not good, and she don't deal with um, the father and the father's own. Um, if she doesn't deal with the, um, if it's a bad relationship between the father and the father's family, then um, then that puts a strain on the relationship. But I didn't have that problem. My mother would That's take me good. to see my father. But you can only go visit would. him only. What, once a month? No, no. He was in state. Okay, at that so time. So I've been going to jail all my life. It started off at the at the state prisons. Okay. And we could go there like every weekend. Okay. So, but then other than that, just um, growing up as a kid without a father in the house, you know, I didn't tell. When they talked about uh, your father at school, I didn't talk about mine. And, you know, I just kind of kept that to myself. But and how then, did that make you feel as a child, I if mean, you can remember? I imagine it was kind of, um, you know, embarrassing. I didn't, it was, it was like it was something I didn't want to bring up. Mm -hmm. You know, I, by the time I realized, I think I got my times mixed up, but by the time that I realized he was in jail, actually, I know I wasn't telling people that my father was in jail. It just, I had nothing to say about fathers. Because I heard your mom said something about she used to tell y'all that he was at the zoo or something like that yeah, he for was at, a while. he was at the zoo for a while. He was at school for a while. To pretty soon it was like, uh, he in jail. He in jail. What about yeah. you? Did you play sports or anything coming up? Yeah, I played. I played. Was, was you any good, though? See, that's that's the part right there. Okay, you know uh -huh, what? Uh -huh. <laughs> no, no, I, I, yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm yeah. give it up. Give it up. So I, I played baseball. And I, you know, that you was, thought you was white. Yeah, that was little. Yeah. No, hey, hey, I wish I was white. Hey, that's no, what, my son played too. Hey, that's where the money at, man. It is where the money exactly. at. Carl Crawford was on there too. He been on here. I gave him a tough time, but, but yeah. yeah. Then after that, I played basketball. That that's one of the times where I wish my father was there to give me the courage to just go out there and mm -hmm. you know not let nobody talk me out my game. It's it's easy to say that, but my dad was there, and he ain't talk nothing out no game. You know what I'm saying? No, no, I'm talking about keep the other people from talking. But, but what I'm game. telling you, he never he was, came to the game. You and, see, he, and he wasn't locked I'm up. I'm talking about my dad was not locked up. <laughs> hey, but from, he didn't give me nothing out here. You know what I'm saying? But from <laughs> the understanding that we have, and it could be from the separation. There you I go. I think my father. He probably would have came. He might have came. Well, to maybe the game. my daddy need to be locked up, and then he probably would have <laughs> came to the game. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, because it do make you think different when you go through stuff yeah. versus people who never have had to go through that. It make you think deeper mm -hmm. about things that you, it really make you understand the things that you really should be loving on. You understand what I'm saying? Yeah. Versus you just out here doing whatever, thing, taking life for granted. See, he has to go through these situations through, he has to live them throughout, me That's telling right. him about them or what have you, so... At least from where he's at, he says that he, you know, he wish he could have been there. Definitely, definitely. I know I believe him because, like I said, when you sit down and you have to think about things that's really happening and with a clear mind and understanding, mm -hmm. it, and you have the time to do that, then yeah, of course, when you if you had an opportunity now, you'd do it right. Yeah, I agree with that a hundred percent. So, um, just like when you when you were playing basketball and you was you come off the bench, no. <laughs> He's like, no, I've hey, always yeah. been a starter. No, 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 you got me. Yeah, you got me. I ain't gonna sit here so I was a superstar. And you know, you, you know. get the you you get a little bit of you know the ball in your hand. Hey, and hey, you I'm nervous because you got to shoot it because you don't know what's gonna happen if you shoot it and miss. You know, go. <laughs> no, I played in grammar school. Then when I went to high school, I made the team. Built your confidence up. Then grades came out. There it is. And I was off the team. Ineligible. My friend, 
<laughs> his father got on top of him. I didn't know you could get your grades up and get back on the team. You just gave up. I started hanging on 79th Street from there. I wasn't trying to play basketball. Wow. Mm-hmm. Yeah. 79th Street. You know, uh, you know, being that you came up in a town where the GDs and the Vice, like all these people had, and, and, everybody and you were that. connected, uh, if you wanted to be, you had to be, your name said it all, uh, you were maneuvering out there uh, and not having to deal with that or how did you how did you when you step out and and those opportunities presented presented themselves right. to you uh how did you avoid them or did you avoid did you take them head on all right early on in life i was aspiring to be what i saw yeah mm-hmm. you know were you the oldest child Mm-mm. no I had, you're not no i had two older brothers right so i have a brother um from my father and then my mother had a son but my oldest brother actually got to live with my father and my brother up under him. I think he he got to be around him, but he was pretty much kind of young, so I don't know how much he actually remembers. Okay. But, yeah, so I was young when I called myself trying to step out. My best friend, and um, I just say that um, he gave his life to save my life. Whoa. Not that I was there, but when he got killed, that's when I said, no, I don't want to be he was out 17, here. I don't do 17, this. right? I think I heard you say. Mm, he was about, I know I was like around 16. He was maybe 18, 18 somewhere okay. in there. Yeah. yeah. And and, and how, he, he got shot, gun violence? Yeah, he got shot. He yeah. got shot over simply on um, some guys rolled past, and, you know, it's disrespectful. You know, you see what all the young guys do. They drop the, everybody drops the forks on the videos because they just have a real something against. GDs or what have you. So that's what happened. The guy dropped the forks and then he dropped the five and the guy parked and got out of his car. And, you know, he went to the trunk with my buddy. He was too tough to um, lead the situation. Mm. Wow. And he got a lucky shot and shot him in the heart from across the street with like wow. a 25. Ah, oh, damn. Yep. Mm. Man. Um. But, you know, sorry to say, but they say, you know, everything happens for a reason because if that didn't happen, you'd still be. St- yeah. I don't know what my life would have went at that right. point. Right. Yeah, I mean, you you gotta understand, man. It's, it, it, you know, things happen, man. I lost my best friend, mom. All type of stuff happened in a, in a, within months. You know, um, it just I think that's the way he does get your attention. You know, the man, the big man, he gets your attention by letting you go through certain things and experience certain things, and it pulls you to a certain place. You know, um, and also that you know that made my father look at things a little different with trying to make sure I was doing the right things. You know, it made him worry about me when he seen somebody that was that close to me at that age. Plus, my father, he had met my father, so. Okay. Yeah. So yeah. did any of your siblings um, fall in that situation? Ended up like on the street or anything like that? When she said on the streets, dealing with the with, with gangs. Yes, with That's gangs and situations. Um, I'm going to say my older brother was more, you know, he kind of grew up more towards the streets. Okay. You know. That, no, because the reason why I was asking, I want to ask you um, if you had any older siblings and stuff like that, because I know the older siblings, especially when the father isn't there, they normally try to step into that role like, you know, like, I'm dad. I'm going to look out for you. I'm going to make sure you're not going to be doing this, so forth. Well, my my other brother, he didn't he didn't live with me, so he wasn't he wasn't there like that. So my my mother's son, then my father's other son. But both my brothers, my middle brother didn't live with me. Okay. My older brother did, but my middle brother, who was kind of, so know, that was the one who that was, was the that was the wild one. He was he was representing. Oh, okay. You know, but he wasn't there to um to influence you. Well, to yeah, to tell me. Yeah, we on boss talk one on one. Yeah, we gonna talk.